Okay, so it's Friday night and I'm here to talk about shopping. So I've been asked by a couple of people uh, to do a video about shopping and kind of to answer a couple of questions about how I shop, what I shop for, where I shop, and that sort of thing. And um, I don't do haul videos on my channel, so I think that's why I've received so many questions about this in the past couple of months. And I've been sort of just making a mental note. I had a note, I thought it was in this book, but I can't find it. So I'm gonna try to just use my memory to talk about what people wanted to hear about. And if I didn't address your question, you can just leave me a comment in this video and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Um, but basically, if memory serves me correctly, people have been wondering, you know, like, what do you buy? Because it seems like I'm only using kits, and I do almost only use use kits, um, but I obviously am a scrapbooker, and I love shopping just like everybody else, and I, I have a fairly big stash, so I don't really need to shop for much. So the things that I typically buy are um, adhesive, so I try to buy my ATG refill in bulk. So um, the lady who runs the local scrapbook store that I go to, she I think they're about two dollars a roll, and you buy them in two packs, so it's four dollars a pack, and it's the Scotch brand, I think. I'm pretty sure they were four dollars. It is the Scotch brand. It's definitely the Scotch brand, um, and I'm pretty sure they were only four dollars a pack. I can't. Don't quote me on that, but it's a pretty good price um, because. Normally at Michael's they're like 10 bucks and so if you use a coupon you can get them for five or you know a little bit more than five. Um, so I, I try to buy ATG refill about once a year so I'll buy about 10 rolls at once and I think that gets me through a year. I don't know because I didn't keep track of when I placed my last order but I just got one recently and I wrote the date on it so that now I'll be able to remember um, how long those 10 last me. The reason I have these markers out is I just wanted, I know I've been talking about these Stettler, talking about, I think mostly on um, Instagram, but about these Stettler Tri Plus Fine Liner markers, which I love. These are my, these are my favorite colored markers to journal with. So you guys have seen me use this orange. I don't, obviously yellow isn't a great color to journal with, but I often will use the pink or I'll use the orange and there's this kind of really nice dark blue and I have a light blue and I often will use these for journaling and doodling. And I really love them and they're awesome. I've had them for quite some time. I bought them in a big pack. Some of them have gone missing over the years. So these are what I have left. These are really, really great because they're so fine. So that's how they write. And they're colorful and pretty. So I really like these, but I'm missing turquoise. I really wish, I thought I had turquoise and I can't find it. Anyhow, I'm gonna keep looking for it. But I just wanted to point out that they're different than these. So, so these are Stettler Tri Plus gel liners. These are not good at all. They dry up fairly quickly. Yeah, like this one is dried up already. And I think if you, I think I have found, if I haven't tried this in a long time, but I think that if you just kind of like move the ball around enough, it'll loosen up and the ink will start to flow again. But seriously, who has time for that? So I just wanted to point out that although they look very similar, like they've got the same, basically they have the same barrel, these are two different things. So if you're looking for the markers that I'm always talking about, it's these ones. It's the Tri Plus Fine Liner, not the Tri Plus Gel Liner, not this one. Okay, so yes, I just wanted, I didn't want somebody to go out and see a package of these and say, oh, those are those markers Tracy's always talking about. No, they're not, so don't buy these. But the other ones that are good to get are these ones the Stettler Lumo Color, and I have these. You guys see me use this black one all the time. I use it for writing on slick surfaces, but I do have a colored pack of them too. And I have them in medium and fine points. So there's a couple of mediums, and the medium points are like that. So that's not, ooh, it's a worn, I hate the set of the feeling of markers, that kind of markers. So. Um, this one my kids must have gotten into because the tip is all messed up, but uh, 
so that's what the medium point looks like and then this is the fine point so this is a lot more what I'm usually looking for is the fine point and these are the Stettler Lumo color so that's the medium point and that's the fine point so I got these before I was a scrapbooker they were for something else they were for coloring in pictures of the brain on overheads which I don't really have to do that anymore so I don't need these um, but since I was a scrapbooker, I went out and got the same markers in fine point so that I could use them like for writing on vellum and writing on transparencies and writing on the outsides of page protectors and any kind of glossy surfaces like some of the stickers and journaling cards that have a glossy surface on them. I use these for so these are the Stettler Lumo colors. So these are the two I would recommend is the Stettler Fine Liner and the Stettler Lumo Color Permanent. So this is actually not a video about markers, but I just wanted to say it while I had your attention. So yeah, I'm actually gonna talk about shopping. So the first category would be consumables. And I think about the consumables, I mean any scrapbooking uh, supply would be consumable because you use paper and you, you use it up and it's gone. But I'm thinking more along the lines of adhesive. So my adhesive refill, um, staples for my tiny attacher, um, glossy accents when it runs out, my Zig two-way pen, those, um, oh, vellum is something that I like to always have on hand. I bought a hundred pack of vellum when I first started scrapbooking and I worked my way through it and I just now had to buy more vellum that on this shopping trip I'm about to talk about. Um, white cardstock, black cardstock, envelopes for cards, so A2 envelopes, those sorts of things. The things that are just seriously they're not fun to shop for but you need them. I kind of, oh, oh albums fall under that too because these are the things that are no fun to get and I would never want to make a trip out just to get them because you know you go out and you spend twenty dollars and you come back and you don't have anything fun to to play with. So consumables are kind of like a no-brainer. Everybody has to buy so, them. So there's those. And then there are things that I can use to kind of like to bring in to the supplies that I already have. So an example of this would be, so, so there's a couple of those things in this shopping trip. So this is the shopping trip that I made to my local um, art supply store. So in Canada we have a chain art supply store. It's called Desserts and um, they sell mostly art stuff but they also have a children's craft section and they have a scrapbooking section and it is a quirky scrapbooking section it's not it's small it does it's not very um complete like you, you can't get most anything that you're looking for you probably won't find it there but it's a good place to go to just kind of like browse and you you might discover something so it's not something to go to go to if you want to say oh I need some scrapbook supplies I'm gonna go there it's more of the place that you go and you just you might find a, a, a find so I went there and I got another gold sharpie permanent marker because my gold sharpie went missing about a year ago and I keep meaning to pick one of these up so they had them there so I bought one of those so this is what I would consider a staple so this kind of isn't fun it doesn't count <laughs> although I will have fun using it then I've been looking for a um, navy blue journaling pen this is not the greatest journaling pen I have to say it's the the house brand so it's Desairs and it has the double tip so one tip is a brush and the other tip is a fine point like a felt tip and um, I've been looking for a shade of blue like this that's blue enough that it doesn't look black because I've gotten a few navy journaling pens that really look black and then I've also I have a couple of journaling pens that should be blue but they actually come out like a purpley hue um, anyways I've been looking for a good shade of blue and I think that this is a reasonable shade of blue, but I, the, yeah, the, there it is. Um, but I don't love it. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, it's not bad, but I love the shade. I'll hold it up so you can see the shade. So see how this one is just a little bit too blue? This one is like a, a I don't know, it's not quite 
not quite navy, but it's nice. I like it a lot. Really love the color. So I'm going to start using this. Um, I kind of do, I don't know. I guess the jury's out. I'll see about it. It doesn't write as smoothly as these ones do. So that might be my problem that I don't love it. So while I was there, I had to buy two because I don't know. I couldn't pass up this pretty color. And I knew I didn't have a color like this in my Stetler fine liners. So I bought one of those too. So these are examples of things that I already have journaling markers, but I'd like to branch out and have a couple of colors that I haven't used lately. And so these are those. This is a staple. Um, then sometimes I'll buy things that I'm just wanting to try. And so you guys have seen, if you follow my videos, you've seen how unhappy I am with non-black stays on. I don't know if all the non-black stays ons are as crappy as the gray one is, but this, see, I'm putting it in my garbage right now. That's where it belongs, right there. Because I said on a video, um, and people laughed at me for saying it, I said they should call it slips off or something. I can't remember what I called it, but it doesn't stay on, it slips off. Um, so anyways, this one looks like the color box version of stays on. It's called surfaces with a Z. Um, and so I don't know how it stamps because I haven't had a chance to try it out yet. But so this is another example of something I might buy is something that I want to try something new of. So I'm familiar with stays on. I like black stays on. Don't like gray. I have red, but my red, um, pad is really dried up. I can tell you right now, this stuff stinks. I haven't even opened it yet and I can smell it and it's not pleasant. Um, oh my God, I don't even think I can open it. It smells so bad. Oh my God. So you know how nice stays on smells? It has that almond extract smell. Well, you're gonna need to plug your nose when you open this stuff. And plus, like seriously, why is it not opening? Oh my God, I think something crawled into this package and died. It smells so bad. Okay, I have to get it open and at least see how it stamps. Ugh. What is it that's, ugh. I, I know, it's alcohol based and you're probably not supposed to smell it. It's really horrible. Okay, let's get a stamp and check this sucker out. I hope it at least stamps well. Whew, seriously guys, I am not being dramatic here. This is nasty. Okay, I'm gonna give it a fair shot by using good cardstock. I think this is good cardstock. I'm not entirely sure. I'm going to use a mat, give it a nice fair shot, and I'm going to ink up, it's not very juicy, ink up this solid stamp and see how it stamps. Huh, pretty crisp. I don't know if it's worth that smell though, you guys. That's pretty nasty. Okay, I'm going to clean. Clean the stamp off. And I know, you know, when you use stays on ink, you're supposed to use a special stays on cleaner, and which I don't have. And so this stamp is probably not going to come clean. That's not the fault of the brand. It's just that's the nature of this kind of ink. And I don't really care. I use my stamps. I don't care if they're clean or not. Let's see how it does with detailed. Um, this one, let's pick a really detailed stamp. So these are the Scraptastic stamps for this month. This one here, it says peace, love, and ice cream. That's fairly intricate. Let's give that one a try. attached. They jam so many stamps onto the sheet that every once in a while they're still attached to one another. Okay, so let's try this one. Huh. It's actually, it's pretty good. It's pretty good on cardstock. Let's check it on a piece of vellum because that's what it's designed for, right? It's supposed to be able to stamp it on a slick surface. 
Oh, that was me, not the ink. So it's always a little bit trickier uh, stamping on a slick surface because it's slick and you could slip. There. Oh yeah, that, that came out good. I'll, I'll show you what it looks like with this. There you go, that's good. That's much better than gray stays on. It's pretty much equivalent to, to the black stays on. Yep, pretty good. Let's try it on some vellum. Mm, beautiful. It's a really pretty color. So basically I got this because I um, am pretty limited when I'm stamping on slick surfaces to only using black because my gray stays on pad sucked. My red and green ones are dried up and I don't use, I have a brown one too. I haven't tried it because in ages since I bought it like in, in 2009 um, because I just never use brown ink. So um, I just wanted to have something that isn't black that I could use for stamping on slick surfaces. And I wanted to try the brand and I thought if I like this one, it's called Caribbean or Tur it's probably called Caribbean. Um, and I thought if I like this, I might buy some other colors. And so I try to be pretty cautious when I'm buying new products. So for example, I've been wanting to try the Prima New Mists. And when I do, I'm only gonna buy one of them. I'm not gonna buy like a whole bunch because I just wanna test it out and see if I like it. Uh, the jury's out on this of whether I can tolerate the smell. Cause the nice thing about the stays on is that it has that nice almondy smell doesn't smell bad at all. It smells good. It smells yummy, like a bakery or something. Um, so anyways, like how it stamps. Not sure I can tolerate the smell. We'll see how it, how it goes. So there's that. And I can move these things out of my way. Then I picked up also from Colorbox um, a, a um, chevron. It's called an art screen. It's a template or a mask. And it's just like your standard template or mask. I usually get Crafters Workshop ones, but I don't have a Chevron one and I like I like Chevron, so I thought I would buy that. So this is another, you know, not I don't, I don't really need it, but it's a fun thing to add into my repertoire of supplies. And then as I mentioned, I had run out of vellum, so I just bought 25 sheets of it and that should do me for hopefully a while. Um, not as long as the 100 did me the last time I bought it, but I got a couple of big projects like I did a friend's wedding invitations, a couple things like that out of that. So Then I was about to leave and I thought, oh, I'll check out what dyes they have. And I wasn't interested in most of their dyes. They're, those Spellbinders dyes are really fancy or really um, like intricate with little details and stuff and it's just kind of like too much for me. Um, like I might use it once or twice, but it's not something that I want to buy a dye of because I, in order for me to buy a dye, I have to think I'm going to use it a lot. So arrows are something that I do use a lot and there's a lot of little shapes here. So I thought I'd try this out. I thought these would actually look really good rolled through with um, some vellum or some plain cardstock. I was thinking maybe black, maybe uh, craft, maybe white, and maybe vellum. So. Um, you will see me try these out in upcoming videos. So that's what I bought at the art store. Nothing all that exciting, um, but it was fun to test out stinky pants. So next I'm going to show you my Emma's Paper repurchases and um, talk a little bit about why I got what I got. because none of this is going to be new to you guys because I get things last because I live in Canada and and yeah it's hard for me to get things quickly and also I've been having this approach lately of kind of like hanging back and waiting and seeing what comes in my kits and then deciding what I want to buy so these uh, Jenny Bolin wired feathers are definitely not new like these have been around for a while um, they're vellum feathers. I'll open them up so you can have a look. There's only three in a pack and they weren't cheap. I just, excuse my terrible nails. I keep saying I'm going to take my nail polish off and I keep not. Yeah, that hurt. Um, so these have been around for a while and they're really pretty. They were not cheap. 
I seriously could probably have made something like this just using my silhouette and some vellum and some stamps and some like twist ties or something. Um, but anyhow, here they are. They're really pretty. I love them and they're going to be really fun, cute accents for something. I don't know what. Then, bows, bows, and more bows. So here's my thinking with the bows. <laughs> As you guys know, we got a package of these in a Scraptastic kit, and I loved them and used every single one of them except for one. I had one left over. Where did I put it? Here it is. I had this one left over. That was the only one that I didn't use in a month. So I used this many in a month. Well, this many in a month. Um, so obviously I love these and they're versatile and they can, they, these are the colors that I often scrapbook with. And so I just decided I need some more of those bows. So I got another package. These ones will probably last me longer because I have so many of the other ones on recent layouts that I'll probably base myself out for these ones. Um, but while I was at it, I knew that I had a package of these. I knew I had a partial pack, but I had, I think I only had like two left. And so these are Studio Calico fabric bows. And well, maybe I should show you what these are in case you didn't watch my videos where I used them. Um, these are cardstock bows that are glued to a clothespin. I usually pull the bows off of the clothespins just because the clothespin is so dimensional. But these would look really cute on mini albums or something that doesn't matter if it's dimensional or even in a layout. But I'm trying to just keep my scrapbooks thinner than they were before so I'm unlikely to use the pins. But I do really love these bows. They're, they're really tough and strong like they don't squish down on you and they're really pretty and well made like the insides they have pattern paper like it's a double sided pattern paper not just white inside like some things so I do really enjoy these Bow Darling crepe paper clothes pins they're awesome um, and then these are something that I've had before too and used them except I think I had like two of them left and so I, I really love this one a lot um, and I really love this. I love them all actually. So, um, so I was on a bit of a bow kick and when I was, cause I searched for those, um, I found these Maggie Holmes ones and I'm not sure I like these quite as much. I do really like this one and I like this one and I like, yeah, I, I do like that. I just, I'm not a huge fan of this one. This one looks a little wonky to me. Um, but the, yeah, the, other than this, they're really cute. They're actually quite cute. And these kind, as well as these, come on little foam dots. And so do these ones. And they're fabric and they're cute. Well, it's not really fabric, they're made out of ribbon. That's what they're made out of. So I got those. And then Emma's Papery always seems to send me one of these. I don't know if everybody gets these or if it's like you have to spend a certain amount of money or what, but I always get a little card kit. And so, yeah, I'm not sure that I would make a card with these things, but it's kind of interesting that they include these kind of foam stamps because I use foam stamps a lot in my mixed media stuff. So I might take these out of this kit and put them in with my foam stamp stuff and my mixed media stuff and maybe, I don't know, give this to somebody who wants to kind of break into scrapbooking or card making. And then these were another impulse purchase. I really did not need to buy these. But I think they were on sale or so. There was a reason that I bought them. Again, the bows really got to me. I really like these little, they're like little um, enamel bows. They're really cute. They're like a hard plastic. And then there's also these gems, which have the little gold trim around it. And then these little bobbly things with, they're like, um, they're kind of like beads. And they're really cute too. I think I like these and these the most out of this. So I got a whole bunch of specialty embellishments basically. Then I saw this Studio Calico colored vellum. I think it's from the Citrus collection that they have out recently. I forget what it's called. Lime Twist. I don't know what it's called actually. 
Um, but, oh, I, I bought some of it, so I'll tell you in a second. But this is colored vellum. So that's what it looks like. It comes in purple and in blue and in green and in yellow. And there are four sheets of each, three sheets of each. One, two, three. Yeah, there's three sheets of each. So I, th I think I'm going to really have fun with these. I think I'll make some arrows with these, with my dies. <laughs> Anyhow, yeah, I just wanted to try them. It looked kind of different and interesting to me, so I thought I would give that a shot. And not very likely to turn up in a kit, right? Also, you know, this is not going to turn up in a kit because it's too old. This is not going to turn up in a kit because it's too old. I think these have already been in a kit. This, I think, is too old too, so I don't think this is going to turn up in a kit. So it's kind of like it's been out long enough that I know that I really like it. I've already used some of them, so I know I'm going to really like them. And I know that they're not going to be in a kit at this point. These. Obviously, they're more current, but they've already been in a kit and I use them so on so sort of what I'm thinking when I buy stuff is is this going to be in a kit? Is it something I need? Um, and that sort of thing. This has been in a kit before and I used it up and It's a piece of vellum from the Maggie Holmes collection that has the bokeh print on it. It's really pretty It comes in this um, piece of plastic uh, So I'll show you what it looks like outside if you're a Scrapbooker who watches YouTube a lot, you've probably seen this product, but if you're newer to the scene, I'll show it to you. So, there it is. It's very pretty. Oops, my camera doesn't like vellum. But I do. Then, I got another piece of the Sun Drifter. <laughs> Um, Studio Calico vellum. This is a printed another printed vellum and it goes from red from pink to red orange to yellow stripes And that's what it looks like and I do have a couple of uncut pieces of this like I, I've been <laughs> I think I bought five or six pieces and I've only used two or three But I saw it there and I thought oh you can always use another piece of that so so I got that then the other thing that I got was paper and you'll notice that it's not a full collection pack so uh, this paper has already been in a kit and I liked it a lot and wanted more of it so I ordered another one so for this piece of paper although I intended on mostly using this side I did use some of the butterfly parts but then I ended up using this part as a major part of another layout and that means that I didn't get to use as much of this butterfly paper as I wanted so that's why I bought another piece of it and while I was looking at that, I noticed this and I couldn't see what it looked like because it's, you know, like a tiny little picture of it. But it looked very kind of cool, watercolory, and it is. It, what I couldn't appreciate on the, TV, on the monitor was that there are these little flowers kind of in the background. It's almost like somebody painted over a pattern paper and then put some watercolors on top of that still. So it's really nice. It's from the Lemon Lush collection and that's what that pack of vellum was from too. Then the back side is these weird strips of photoreal papers. Kind of interesting. Not something I'd likely use, but interesting. This is gorgeous though. I'd use this for background. And then this was kind of similar to that. It caught my eye in the same way. And again, I couldn't appreciate that there was something else on it. So it has this kind of every, every stop everything and dance, it says. That's awesome. <laughs> um, so yeah. That's actually really cool. And then the back side of this is quite a nice print. It's triangles. Another piece of Lemon Lush. This one has like a graphic kind of look with um, text and, and words. Always. <laughs> That's funny because it looks just like the Feminine Hygiene product always. It's like almost exactly the same font. <laughs> I don't know if they did that on purpose or what, but it looks almost the same to me. Um, and then this is gorgeous. This is why I bought this piece of paper actually was for the, this side. I was kind of looking at it and saying, well, that's nice, but why did I pick it? I picked it for this. So yeah, 
the um, panty liner paper. Then we've got um, these. Oh yes, and I bought this for this. So yes, I remember wanting this in this color. That's going to be distracting now. I'll have to co cover that up. I thought that this would make kind of a cool background paper for one of those layouts where things are kind of laid out instead of layered. Um, so anyhow, that's what I thought I would use that for. And then this was just too pretty to not get. It's just cool. I love it. And then there's the back side. Don't really care for that, but this is really cool. So I went looking for this one. And got a couple of his friends come along for the ride to Canada. So that's the stuff I got from Emma's Papery. So not a huge haul, and, and this is typically the size of my hauls. They're not all that big. It's just kind of some stuff that I can supplement my kits with and just kind of pull in and add to the mix of what I'm using. So, you know, if I'm feeling like I'm getting bored with my masks, I'll pick up a new mask, or bored with my markers, I'll pick up a new marker, and that sort of thing. The other thing I got was, um, let me tell you about this. So I got Grand Bazaar from Basic Gray. And I might, I don't know if I'm the only person who likes this paper. I could be, I don't know. I love this paper. But let me just say, I'll open the package before I talk. So let me just say that this is not typically my style of scrapbooking paper, but it's really my style of decorating. Like I love this kind of stuff for home decor. I love um, kind of the like, Indian kind of, um, what do I want to call it? Kind of like that exotic kind of patterns that you would find in India or Pakistan or one of the, you know, like just kind of like beautiful patterns from far away is what I want to call it. Um, and I just saw, I saw this when Basic Grape kind of put out all of their new collections on their blog and I saw this and I thought, wow, I'd really like to have that. I'd like to have fabric like that. But then I thought I, maybe I could kind of use this as a way of scrapbooking a little bit outside of my comfort zone, give me something to do outside of a kit. I'm pretty sure that this stuff is not gonna show up in any kits. I could be wrong, I don't know. Um, but this is pretty not mainstream like not everybody's going to like this and I know and I you know I think that the kits are kind of marketed for like obviously she wants to sell them so she's gonna try to put papers that lots of people are going to like in it and so I'm I don't know I might see a page or two from this collection in a kit but we're not gonna see I don't think um, and I don't have any inside scoop or anything but I don't think we're gonna see a kit that has a lot of this in it so I think that this was a safe bet I hope <laughs> Um, because I don't, I don't know if I could use a ton of it, but it's, I just, oh, I want to show you. So this stripe is not my favorite thing in the world, um, but this is gorgeous. It's like a very tight, um, what is that called again? I'll think of it before the end of this video. I always forget that word, but that stuff. It's called Istanbul, this paper. And then this one is called Ottoman, and it has foxes. And then it's, so this would make a beautiful background paper. Although the foxes are really cool. And then this one is called Galata. And there's the foxes again. This one is called Empire, and it kind of looks like wheat or some type of a plant with flowers on it. And I love the colors, love the colors. This is really nice. And then another one of these. It's a little hard on the eyes, but in small amounts, this would look good. Um, this one looks like a rug. It's called Byzantine. Byzantine, whatever that is. Um, yeah, it's really pretty. 
And again, in small amounts, right? So the whole page is quite overwhelming, but little bits of it would be nice. And then a really rich coral color. And then this one is called Turkey. And it has a pretty um, Asian influence flower pad, a floral pattern. This one is called Hagia Sophia, or Hagia. I don't know how you pronounce it, but it's really pretty. It's very, very bold. And then this is really cool. This reminds me of Sassafras or Studio Calico. Yeah, nice. And then this one is called Persia. And then another wonky pattern that kind of reminds me of Sass. This one is called Taxim. Mm, I don't love this one. And then the other side is a black, like a mottled black. That has a bit of interest to it. Then this one is called Const... Oh, I can't say that. Sorry, guys. I've encountered that word before and I can't do that one, sorry. Um, yeah, so I'm not a huge fan of this. I think the elements on this one are just too big. I guess you could cut things out. This would be a good cutout page, but ooh, look at that, that's a nice one. And then another color scheme for that same tight pattern. It looks like a tile floor. It's called Mediterranean. And then ooh, another one of those, ooh, that's a lot. Um, and then Top Cappy. Sorry, I'm probably butchering these words. It's really cool. And another really nice solid yellow. And then these strips of color are letter stickers. So you've got upper and lower case, as well as numbers and ampersands and a bit of punctuation in this purpley color, a teal, a pink, an orange, a, a um, wheat colored yellow, and a white, but it's a little bit off-white. So this is white and this is off-white. And then we have elements element stickers including some borders, some flags, some phrases, some themed shapes. Nice. Very nice. So I think I'm going to have fun with this collection. I mean not every single page I could use but a lot of them I could. I'm actually surprised because I did notice that a lot of the ones had solids on the back and I thought well if I can't use it I could at least use the back right so I can see me using that but maybe not the other side um, this one ugh, I don't know I get at least that's black and that's a nice neutral I could use that for die cuts I could use that for matting and layers and that sort of thing this I really like this side this is kind of bold and big and I'm not sure about that but I do like this in small amounts I like this and I like this, so I like both sides of that. I really like this. I really like this. I really like this. I like this as well. And I like the, these tile floors in both the both the color schemes. So, yeah, I th you know what? I, it, I felt like this was a risky buy, but I'm actually really pleased with it, and I can't wait to use it. I think it's going to be a fun change. Yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad I bought this. So, so I bought this from I bought this paper pack from my local scrapbook store. I bought this stuff and these embellishments right here from. Oops, and let's not forget those million dollar boat um, feathers. Um, so I bought this stuff from Emma's Papery, and I bought this stuff from my local art supply store. And that is about the most shopping I have done in a year, is this stuff right here. I bought all of these within a week of one another. So I bought this about a week ago. This came in in the last couple of days and I got this tonight. Um, 
and I'm probably good for a long time, like maybe till winter CHA. I'm gonna try to go until winter CHA with just this stuff. Of course I get kits every month and I've got a whole room of stuff. So um, that's my plan is to not buy any more unless if something like, you know, I run out of black stays on or something, I, I would get that. Um, but my goal is to just use this now and that should be enough with my with my kits. And so what this does is it kind of spices up my life a little bit so that A, if, if there's ever a kit that I don't like, I mean, so far I've been a member of Scraptastic, I mean, I'm on the design team and I've been getting Scraptastic kits for a year, more than a year now, and I have yet to receive a kit that I don't like. But, I mean, it's bound to happen, right? Like kits, that's the thing about kit clubs is you don't get to choose what comes and I think Jessica does an amazing job of putting kits together, but there's going to be times when you're not going to like the kit that's in your kit club. And if it happens every once in a while, then you're probably in the right kit club for you. Um, but if it happens often, then obviously that's a problem. Um, so, you know, if I ever do get a kit that I don't love, or let's say I get a kit and it's really themed, like this month's one is themed for summer. I got the Summer Nights kit. And I'm scrapbooking lots of summer, but then I decide I'm gonna go pull out some old pictures from when I was in university or something. I might wanna use these things for that because it, it's not gonna work with my summer kit and it's easy to just kind of pull this collection out and use it and then I can kind of use some fresh supplies that I'm excited that I picked out myself and that sort of thing. So for me, this is kind of like the perfect balance between what I love about kit clubs is someone else does my shopping, someone else sorts it out, somebody else figures out what goes with what and makes it not look too matchy-matchy but still looks good together. And I love that and I don't have to find the best buy on anything or source out where am I going to get that and what goes with that. It's all done for me. So I love that. But there's also a part of me that loves to shop and loves to pick out stuff that I like and put it together myself. And so getting little bits of things every here and there allows me to indulge that shopping part of me that likes that kind of thing. But then for the most part, I have it's simple and I just have boxes coming every month that I open up and use. So it's kind of like the best of both worlds. It doesn't really break the bank because, I mean, I don't even remember how much this was. I didn't even, actually, I didn't even look. I hope it wasn't too much. Um, but like this stuff was maybe $20, um, maybe a little bit more. This was 10 and this might have been five and these were like a dollar each and this was, I don't know how much that was. Um, and then this stuff I think was 35 or $40 and you know, this might've been 20. So, I mean, that's not too bad for, I haven't shopped since, I don't remember the last time I shopped. The last time I shopped was just to get ATG refill. So yeah. Anyhow, um, that's just how I do it. Um, how do you do it? Let me know. I'd like to hear. So just at the end here, I thought I'd put a little clip of me. Uh, this is how I store my collection packs when I get them. And so what I do is I take a punch, a tab punch from Stampin' Up, and I punch out a tab shape from the little um, summary top sheet of the collection pack. Um, and the reason I do that is I'm very visual. And so even though I'm writing down the collection name, when I'm browsing my paper, it's it's the patterns that stick out for me and so I'll, I'll, I'll notice that right away and recognize it as going with the Grand Bazaar collection and so I just kind of stick it on there. I'm going to use my tiny attacher to attach the tab and then I will file it away in my paper.